The story of this project started with a new pair of shoes. I decided I needed a new pair of blue sneakers because the pair that I'd been wearing were about 20 years old. That old pair have been repurposed now as shoes for my shop. They made their shop video debut in the workshop casters video. I think they'll work out fine for that purpose. While the new shoes are really wonderful and comfortable, a problem arose with the back of them. It's too high to easily put the shoes on. I decided that the solution to the problem was to buy a shoehorn or maybe make one. So I decided to make one. I was in Rocklear one day, so I decided to pick up one of their shoehorn turning kits. The hardware consists of a shoehorn part and a part that will hang on the wall. I went to my local hardwood dealer, Tropical Exotic Hardwoods in Carlsbad, California, and picked out this Paduke turning blank. Because of the size of the turning blank, it took quite a while to turn it down to round using my roughing gouge. A roughing gouge like this one is often called a spindle roughing gouge because it cannot be used for bowl work safely. I measured the hardware for the shoehorn using a diameter gauge and calipers and turned that end of the shoehorn handle down to size using a parting tool. I also used the parting tool to turn part of the end down so it would make a good transition. I repeated the same steps on the other end of the shoehorn handle for the hardware that hangs the shoehorn on the wall. With both ends of the shoehorn handle turned down to the correct diameter, I proceeded to form the handle using a roughing gouge. On this end of the handle, I decided that I wanted to leave a slight knob, so I started forming it with a roughing gouge and a small bowl gouge. Since I started with such a large turning blank, I continued to use the roughing gouge to turn the handle down to a size that was good for my hand. While we're watching this process, this is a good time for me to remind all of you that I do have a website. The website tells all about me and things that I've done in the past. I also have a blog on the website. I use the blog to keep people up to date and talk about current events and woodworking and what's going on with social media as it relates to WB Fine Woodworking. Once I turned the handle down to size, I started forming beads on the handle. At first I started the beads with my bowl gouge, but I quickly switched to my new spindle gouge. At first I used my skew chisel to start the beads, followed by my spindle gouge. As I worked through this project, I really enjoyed using this new spindle gouge. I highly recommend that you use something like this instead of a bowl gouge. Unfortunately, the set of turning tools that I bought didn't come with a spindle gouge. After using the spindle gouge for a while, I decided that I didn't need the skew chisel. I could just use my spindle gouge. That ended up making the process faster and actually even easier.
Turning beads like this with a spindle gouge is a very simple process. It's something that any beginner could do. You can see here how I turn the chisel to make the edge of the bead. The space between the beads is usually called a cove. Once I had the beads formed, I decided to take a little more off the handle. So I had to reform them again with my spindle gouge. I used the roughing gouge to turn the beads down just a little bit. Reforming the handle beads was very quick and easy. Making changes like this is something that makes wood turning a lot of fun. With the beads formed, I moved back up to the top end of the shoehorn handle to work on the knob and the transition between it and the beads. As can be seen in this sequence, the roughing gouge actually has two jobs. Roughing, as the name suggests, and as shown here, smoothing out the surface. With everything turned, I now rechecked the diameters at both ends of the shoehorn handle. Both of them were correct. Now the handle was ready for sanding. Sanding is a very important process, especially for the beginner turner. Sanding is necessary to get out all the tool marks. Beginners usually leave a lot of them in their work. It takes a lot of practice and time to learn how to use the tools to smooth out a piece and avoid some of the sanding. For sanding on this project, I'm using the Rockler sanding strips. They're especially made for wood turners and they're pretty nice. You can actually use any sandpaper that you want to. On this project, I started with 240 and went all the way up to 600 grit. If you don't use the Rockler sanding strips or something similar, you may have to get the 400 and 600 grit at an auto supply place rather than your big box store. After sanding up to 600 grit, I switched to the Rockler micro mesh sanding pads. I used them from 1500 all the way up to 12,000 grit. In case you're wondering, there are other companies who sell similar products that allow you to sand to very high grits. I found that sanding to these high grits really gives a good feel to the tool in my hand. With the sanding all done, it's now time to apply the finish. I've started using the Ron Brown's Best Finish that is a mixture of walnut oil, wax, and shellac. It's easy to apply and it looks and feels great on a tool. I apply it with the lathe off at first, then I put the lathe in reverse at a slow speed to spread the finish. Here I've turned the lathe off and I'm checking to see how well the finish has spread over the whole handle. I decided the handle was ready for a second coat of finish. This finish really shines up nicely when the lathe speed is increased and friction polishes the wax and the shellac. I make sure that I polish every surface, especially between the beads. After applying and polishing the finish, it was time to part off the shoehorn handle with a parting tool. While the parting tool is used for a lot of other things in turning, this is where it got its name. This process is called parting off.
I used my Ryoba saw to cut off the little nub that was left from parting off the piece, and I also used the saw to cut off the other end of the turning bark. Now it was time to drill the holes for the hardware. The diameter of the hardware piece was measured with a drill gauge. I then used the drill gauge to make sure that I had the right diameter bit. To drill the holes, I secured the handle in my workmate and used a small 5 32nd pilot drill to drill out the holes first. The washer on the drill bit is used to help keep the drill level. Then I switched to the 19th 64th drill with some tape to mark the depth. I followed the same exact procedure on the other end of the shoehorn handle. If you're wondering why I didn't use the lathe to drill these holes, the shoehorn handle is too long for that process. The shoehorn end fit nicely into the wood handle. After inserting the other end to the top of the handle, I noticed that it needed a little cleanup, so I decided to use my belt sander. Once the handle was all finished, it was time to mix up some epoxy and attach the hardware. If you haven't seen my video, Glue and Silicone Don't Mix, I'd suggest that you watch it. Using a silicone mat like I'm using here and the silicone brushes really helps with the glue up and cleanup is a snap. I use the silicone brushes and the mat with regular wood glue as well, and that cleans up even better than the epoxy. While it's a good thing to take some time to do the glue up with the epoxy correctly, you can't wait too long or the epoxy will set up. 5-minute epoxy actually sets up in less than 5 minutes and can't be used after it's set up. Don't ask me how I know. I forgot to mention earlier that these little pinch cups that I use to mix the epoxy are also silicone. They're very handy for mixing up glue and they clean up real easily. Now for the true test to see if this project was worth all the time, effort, and money. Ah, success! Well, that's it for turning the shoehorn handle. I made mine out of Paduk. And yes, I now have Paduk shavings and sanding dust all over the shop. It's amazing how far away from the lathe all of that got. This is a simple, easy project for beginners. You could make your handle very simple like I did, or you could put all kinds of fancy decorations on it. What you do with the handle does not affect the function of the shoehorn. This has been a very handy tool to have in the bedroom. I'm using it every day. I made mine using the Rockler kit, but you could use different other kits. There's other kits on the market. I happen to like the Rockler kit, and I was in Rockler one day and picked it up while I was there. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up down below. Ask any questions, make any comments that you'd like to make. 
If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, please do that and ring that notification bell so you'll see when we have future videos. And thank you all very much for watching.